So I hope that you found interesting this kind of policy diffusion little short article talking about uh, the kind of practices and uh, a bit helpful. And I think that the central aspect, even though we talked about you know governments and and this issue of clustering, policy dilution, policy translation, policy borrowing, all that are, are, are very similarly oriented, right? And Kind of discussions around the OECD, the PISA exams, larger discussions about assessment in, in education and in music, all of them have elements of policy um, diffusion and policy borrowing and, and clustering, right? So, but the idea of the PISA uh, kind of assessments is, is precisely based on the idea of clustering, right? That some, some level of policy clustering allows for uh, comparison, which allows for improvement through comparison, right? Um, I think that what, what is interesting is the potential to bring some of these things into music education, right? So given that some phenomena uh, happen both at the local level and at a more global level. Certainly, the idea of, of diffusion that it connects to policy as, as it relates to programs can be seen, for instance, in El Sistema, where, where the idea of you know instrumental instruction, the one on one to uh, to ensemble based gets you know kind of this kind of distributed or used or co-opted, however you want to see this globally, right? To borrow from a particular place, particularly through and making use of the language of social justice and inequity and access and uh, you know kind of underserved communities. Uh, all that, right? Um, I think it is, would be really cool to um, for you to consider and to for you to imagine in what ways you, you know the kind of programs that you run, the curricula that you have developed, your own national curricula, in 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 the locations where 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 you are, have elements of of, of policy diffusion, right? What, what what do you think it is yours that might have been used elsewhere? And what did you that you know that started uh, with you that is now in use elsewhere? And what are the elements? What what are the kinds of uh, losses? Right? What 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 gets uh, diluted, kind of lost as it gets copied or used elsewhere to be to be a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more careful with that. What happens, right, when when we when when we try to uh, to to recontextualize, to reuse uh, policies that have been developed uh, for a local context, for a specific context, right? And, and this is one of the interesting and dangerous and problematic aspects of policy delusion is delusion is what gets lost, right? What is not known about the ways in which a successful policy in a particular place uh, took in order for that to take, uh, to, to, to take hold in the way that it did, right? Who were the players? How did they interact? For how long? Through what processes? How that environment was constituted? And what gets lost is some oversimplified or, or diluted when that gets taken and placed elsewhere. Even if it doesn't travel, you know, even if it travels within the same city, even if it travels within the same country, right? What are these elements and why does this happen and what kinds of practices we can institute and how can we, when we are being faced with the process of a program, a similar program being instituted where we are, what, what kind of questions can we raise, what kind of issues can we present, what kind of challenges can a two process can, can we can pose and contribute to it? Right, knowing that these ideas of policy um, diffusion, policy translation, borrowing, are, are really part of our, our general discourses in, in, in education and in, in general policy construction. Critical in this, as you see in, um, in item number two, is, is um, you, you know, the, what I have called dilution can be interpreted as race to the bottom, right? In what ways when we are trying to borrow and kind of reorganize or copy things just because you know this country does that or that program does that what are the kinds of things that get lost and and how this over time can have a really flattening event uh, kind of effect rather than an amplifying
um, you, you, you know, issues, for instance, uh, in terms of, of, of creative composition, you know, something that I've, I've been looking at for, for, our, for our project, are really interesting, right? Uh, processes of, of creative uh, composition that were, hap that were happening in the 60s and in, in UK, and they're happening in the 70s and 80s in Canada through, through you know, Schaefer, Maureen Schaefer. Um, when they arrived in they arrived in the U.S., they they were really simplified to the extent that a critical aspects of of the process got lost, and yet the same idea then implemented without the complexity richness of a particular process within an educational environment that was very outcomes oriented, created something that that was somewhat disastrous, and then at the same time help that kind of more um, you know, creative, adaptive curriculum to be dismissed as of lower quality, as 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 you know, constructivism at its work, worse. Right. So I think that these kinds of analyses become really important for us to see. Uh, also, when we see analysis and criticisms of programs, right? And what what is it that is being criticized? Is it the name? Is it the adaptation? Is it the, 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 you know, the dilution, the loss of the complexity? Is it that we don't have the capacity to do that? Or is it that we're, we're trying to implement something without the, the, you know, the capacity to do it in a, in a rich, complex, and, and, um, and, and healthy way, right? Those become really important questions in this process, and they all have to do with this notion of, of policy dilution. Uh, and diffusing. So here I talk about number four, you know, they're not always beneficial. Uh, number five, that, you know, the environment and the capacities in the environment may change, uh, make a, you know, they, 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 they have a really important uh, aspect. What's already established on how people understand what's been established, right? When we talk about a particular program, a particular idea, uh, and how people understand that. So the, the frame of mind and, and the theoretical capacity of the environment matters, as, as number six articulates. Um, and, and then finally, the idea that decentralization matters, right? And of course, here this, this article talks about government and kind of big picture, but we can think about this issue of autonomy that we discussed several times too as mattering, right? The, the kind of non-hierarchical environments where not every decision making and decision making over time is not concentrated matters. So that this idea of the decentralized aspect, meaning that interaction and conversations as we talked about earlier with the second, uh, the call batch and Adam, and framing capacity really do matter with, because they are and become a representation of decentralization, right? Of something that is not always going through the same kind of pathways, through the same people, through the same kind of frame of mind. Uh, but, you know, because they, they are decentralized, they have the chance to, for, for new processes to be in place, to, to new ideas to, to kind of take uh, center for, in, in, you know, new models to be tried out and so forth. And so um, all of this matters when we're trying to, to, to make comparisons, when we're trying to adapt programs from elsewhere into our own. And, and I think this is, this is a, another invitation for you to, to consider is this, when you look at a case, your case is, is this idea, how would this case translate? How would others might see? How, how two different communities with two different interests in your own town, in your own community, your own kind of school environment might approach the same kind of pro program, right? Um, even within music, if I were to approach a particular program from a formatic standpoint or from a more creative compositional standpoint or from a more kind of uh, social emotional standpoint, um, how would those um, Framings created the diffusion of the same program, but in different directions, uh, differently. All right, and it would it be important to consider that when I'm trying to create a different emphasis while using a similar program, right? So diffusing the kind of something from one place to another, 
but now with a different with a different focus. These things matter when we're trying to create adaptation, uh, uh, particularly in the sense that they prevent then copying and with that copying a flattening of, of the possibility of the program. All right. Now, I hope that's interesting, and um, I hope that we'd we'll love to hear from you on how you might see this happening, what experiences you have with, with, with something that's similar to, to, to this concept. Take, take care.